This could be our last goodbye, our last goodbye, she never told me why. This could be our last goodbye, oh I won't meet again. We watched her breathing through the night, through the night with a candle burning bright. She couldn't get to sleep that night, she won't have that problem anymore. My bathroom looks like a crime scene now, blood on the floor and the walls in the loo. Let's hope they never find her body or I'll be a dead woman too. You'll fly away? God, I hope so. Do you like animals much? Yes! I love them! Then I have a proposal for you. Hmm? The one to inherit a reincarnated or otherwise unavailable Malima's position. Inherit said Malima's title in the two special areas over which no other Malima holds sway. Would you like to become our Miliera of Animals and Fertility? What? What did you do now? Why is it automatically his fault? She wouldn't have to live there. What? You said something and she passed out! Really? It happens in movies all the time. From what I've seen so far, Kuma is completely idiotic. I offered her a position as one of Celestia's Malime. Well, you are going to have to wait for an answer. She's out cold! Evidently. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> Lee, I'm scared. I will tell you exactly what I told her. In Mahayanes and Kei's absence, we have four Malime where we should have six. Soon I am going to leave, but I have named my heir, the one to inherit my powers and authority. That heir is Isaji Den Hoistia. <laughs> Will you stop that? Dude, you're the one who renamed him. Take responsibility. However, that leaves two other vacancies. The one to inherit a reincarnated or otherwise unavailable Malima's position inherits said Malima's title in the two special areas over which no other Malima holds sway. Then I simply asked her if she'd like to become our Miliara of Animals and Fertility, and evidently she passed out. Lee, I don't care about that. Of course not. It's not about you. I told you what I told her. You wanted to know what I'd done, so I told you. If you don't care, don't ask. I'm scared. scared. Akuma! Lee, she's hurting so bad, and I can't help her. She isn't. The wounds aren't. She's not getting worse, is she? It doesn't seem like it, but she's so weak and pale, and I can't stop the pain she's in. Sure you can. If you die, she dies, right? I didn't hurt her with my offer, did I? I don't know. I think it was just too much stress. I'll call you tomorrow. Hopefully she'll feel a bit better by then. Maximum drama, ahoy! Fifty bucks says yay. The last thing I'd intended would have been to cause her more stress. I know that, but I think today was a bit much. Let her feed from our bond as much as she needs to, alright? From what I understand, she's been fighting since just a little before dawn this morning. Yes, dawn is usually in the morning. And it lasted till a few hours ago. She's exhausted even with the power you gave her. No. 
Give her as much of my power as you need to if it will help, alright? Can you promise me that you will do that? Of course! That's what I've been doing! Good. But still, even with your power boost, she's healing really slow. That's what Kaiser always says. By the way, the word is slowly. Adverbs. Learn them. Love them. Before I gave her my power last night, I was only at one-fourth of my former strength. Now I'm at considerably less. If I had more power to give her, barring the piece of my soul that Lalia has, she would be healing faster. Do you want me to retrieve the piece that's in Lalia's care? What did you do? Make whole cruxes? It's not that, Lee. Your power is working fine. Akuma's problem is that she's scared that Orion said about the, the spell is true. Actions speak louder than words, Lee. And while she's not ready to believe, she's almost there. Oh, almost to voicemail. Orion did cast a love spell on me. Vaughn confirmed that. However, love spells do not affect me emotionally. I felt some odd vibrations, but no false emotions. See? You shouldn't have told her that! Yes, because every good relationship is built on lies and deception. She will second guess now! I suspect she's even more insecure than that. I also suspect that the problem is not that love spells don't affect him. It's the fact that he told Akuma about the spell in the first place. It's like playing the game. It's better if you don't know about it. By the way, I just lost the game. God damn it, Everett. I've explained it to Vaughn and I'll explain it to you. I've lived with myself damn long enough to know how I feel. I also used to play a lot of pranks involving emotional spells and the villagers played similar pranks on me. At some point, the spell stopped affecting me. Lee, no matter how strong you feel may seem, you have to remember that she's actually a weak little weeaboo who can't do anything for herself? That she is still just a child that hasn't been able to age fully! Oh please, spare us! Epiphany hasn't been able to age fully and she's not a weak little weeaboo who can't do anything for herself. Hey, I know about being stuck in eternal childhood, alright? Don't lecture me. You have scalpels? Do you also carry syringes? I usually just carry cell phone, keys, script, and a uh, tube of lipstick. You could say condom on the show, Everett. Tube of lipstick, I say. Look, you want Akuma to be sure of you and your love, right? I mentioned it because Vaughn mentioned it to me that Orion had told her. Well, I am only trying to help you, so don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Honestly, I don't give a shit. Someone else doubting your emotions is not going to make them any less of what they are, and it damn sure won't make them go away. I don't care what you or anybody else thinks. RAGE QUIT! DING DONG! Oh god, with the flying. Hi, Cory. I'm not doubting your emotions, Lee, since I can feel them just fine. However, I was trying to help you. Forgive me for wanting to help the person who raised me.
Pellegrino! Lee's not here. He stormed off. I'll get him back in just a sec. Rage quit! No! Ding dong! If you don't doubt my emotions, then stop lecturing me about what I should and shouldn't do. I don't doubt your emotions. I can feel them just fine, thank you, Mr. God thingy! Kaya no mtek. Palin for may you orally please the gods. Seriously, go do that. I tell the truth, that is all. I don't believe in secrecy and lies. However, over the course of this show, you'll see firsthand just how pervasively they exist. I don't believe in hiding the truth, no matter the cost. I merely wanted to make certain she knew that Orion's erstwhile spell had no sway over me. Yes, well, you could have told her when she was better. I mean, look at what she had to go through. You forcing your power on her. Me going missing. That bastard raping her. Oh, please, I'm sure she enjoyed being raped. Saying things like that perpetuates a culture of victim-blaming and misogyny. If it were anyone else, I wouldn't, but this is Akuma we're talking about. She loves the attention. I've been asking myself the same question. It might have something to do with my twin sister being the CEO. That reminds me, I should really bug her for a pay raise. Rage quit! Ding dong! Then the fight! The thing with Caleb! Now is just not a good time to mention it! Maybe you're just like my mother! She's never saddest, she's never satisfied. Why do we scream at each other? This is what it sounds like when doves cry. Or when Serlena sings, God, that was horrible. <laughs> Hush your shut. How sad it is that it's almost time for us to leave your happy home. I would have liked to see your reaction to what I'm about to say. Wow, what a drama boat! I already don't like you! I'm gonna pee in your shoes if the chinchilla doesn't chew on them first. <coughs> Time slot limit. <coughs> Me? Who are you? Ooh, candy! Ooh, something shiny! I won't waste more time. I'm going to erase his memories of the last year. Ta-ta now. Not like you have any to speak of. No! Lee! Sam! Pumpkin! Now who has the last word? Bitch. Arf! Hey, why the fuck does it sound like no one fucking knows each other? Are we all high or is it just Ari and me? Wait! Who the fuck are you? That's Epiphany. Her parents have been dead for over 20 years. Wow, way to be an insensitive bitch! And don't worry, I can call you a bitch. It's okay, I'm a werewolf. Well, yeah, I knew that. Kenny told me! Who the fuck is Kenny? Go eat a Pop-Tart, Ari! Yeah, go eat a Pop-Tart, Ari. Wait, who the fuck are you? And why did Ari's voice change? I am older than God! No, but seriously, my name is Rhea. Oh, okay then. Actually, I should probably be saying... Cannon! And as for Ari, yeah, his voice actor got caught dipping his pen outside the company ink, if you know what I mean. Don't you mean dipping his pen in the company ink? Not if he was married to someone in the crew and got caught screwing around. <laughs> ha ha, he got fired. Erd. I ate all the Pop-Tarts. Why is the room spinning? You didn't. And I washed them down with water from the cooler. I'm here. 
That seems to be the problem. Your poison control is not the problem. Because if so, I can just go now. Sai Sai doesn't feel so. <coughs> Oh, there you are. Come on, it's time for violin class. But my shoe! Do you play the violin with your feet? No? Then shut up! No? I'm taking the loud talking prop downtown for violin class. Taxi only waits for 10 minutes, so we have to get out there. Wait, Akuma plays the violin? Damn girl, I'm not going to do everything for her. If she wants the tiny violin played for her, she's going to have to learn to do it herself. Didn't she just vomit it all up? Yeah, on my shoes. Nobody cares about your ugly ass work boots. Well, shoot, I guess I'm gonna have to take her to the hospital if Desmoda's busy. Can we go to the one that's anthro friendly? I don't want the doctor trying to convince me to have my horns removed again. RAGE QUIT! Wait, I have like a million questions. How in the heck bubbles did Cinnamon know about Librius having a grandson and stupid people being irrelevant? And like the crazy lady asked, why do Epiphany and Evren act like they don't know each other and have to reintroduce themselves? It's unsound, lady! Same thing. ARF! Anyway, how did Cory get her soul back from Orion's soul pendant? When exactly did Akuma and Orion fight? This morning, that is, the morning of October 26, 2008. Didn't Telibrius say he wouldn't speak to Akuma again if she lost the fight with Orion? Akuma won. Cory was the one drummering about his scratches, remember? Which brings me to... Where in the heck bubbles was Akuma even bleeding or injured? She bleeds from the vagina! I meant besides that. No, I mean, Onion just stabbed her lady parts, like, a hundred times, with his dick. <laughs> yeah, sounds legit. Moving on, why would Vaughn be checking on Akuma's health if his intention was to kill her, eat her, and take her power? Wait, also, why would anyone want to eat Akuma? I mean, have they seen Akuma? Have they seen her face? This is just such a mystery to me. This is so puzzling. I don't understand it at all. Ugh, seriously. I think his intention was to mate with her, but yeah, that's a good point. Why would he care? And yeah, why would anyone want to eat a kuba? Good god, it's nasty. I see you smiling, Rhea. I know you agree with me. If Akuma and Orion fought to the death and Akuma's soul was in the waiting room for the afterlife, how was Akuma able to be present? That one's easy. We just went and got her after the commercial break. Be grateful. Resurrections are not cheap. Why would any of us be grateful? Good point. Is anyone else going to mention how fucked up it is that Rosemary thinks Akuma's slavery bond to Elibrius was inspiring? She's black for hell's sake. True, but I've always gotten the impression that Rosemary's watching a completely different show than the rest of us. Also, I'm pretty sure Epiphany is cursed before Lucky, in which she asked permission to curse. Evren said she hasn't heard from either of her parents in quite a while now, but she mentioned her mum in present tense and scriptures. When you're a 15 year old girl, going five days without hearing from your mum is a long time. Right. At that age, I had barely heard from my mum in three years. Thirteen for me. Wow, I didn't realize this was the Parental Neglect Olympics. What? We're not competing in that sense, like, at all. Besides, Epiphany would win. Her parents have been dead for over 20 years. Yes, so we've heard. 
Vaughn said that there was extensive damage to Akuma's soul, but he didn't specify which one, and before he had indicated that she had more than one soul. Of course, I don't think she has any souls, but that's just me. It's not just you. Yeah, I was just going to say. Yep, I think we're pretty much all in agreement there. Oh, thank... Um... Well, this is awkward. Shut up, Rhea. No. Okay. Thank Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. No. Just no. Oh my dragon. Oh, wait. No! Ew. Ew. We love you, Dragon, but not really. We're doing this out of spite. <laughs> I don't think anyone actually knows who Dragon is yet. Oh well, they can find out later. Vaughn is fucking crazy. You're one to talk. No, I mean literally. He's with this magenta person. I don't know what that means, but... I do. I'll explain later. Same with the dragon thing. Um, why is Vaughn helping to stabilize Akuma so she can go back to feeding off of Cory when he wants Akuma for himself? Epiphany indicated that she didn't know what a Mary Sue was. Short answer, by the way, is vulgar. Anyway, um, she had referred to Akuma as a Cory Sue in potential damage control. Ari was babbling about Akuma and Libris's bond and assumed that it was parasitic in nature, but Cory is the one with whom Akuma has a parasitic bond. Akuma's bond to Elibrius is a slavery bond, which is not inspiring at all. By the way, Rosemary. I was smoking crack cocaine off my Pop-Tarts. Vaughn's accent changed like eight and a half minutes in. Um, you're going to point out a character's inconsistent accent. Really think about that for a minute. I lampshaded to the fake accent almost eleven minutes in anyway. Can confirm, Vaughn's penis is not, in fact, smaller than a baby pickle. <laughs> I really don't want to know how you know that. I don't either. Vaughn told Olibrius that Akuma would be well enough to talk tomorrow, and that she would be unable to talk today. But Akuma showed up today and is perfectly able to talk. When exactly did Olibrius force his energy on Akuma? You realize we have a chinchilla and a toitetsu in our care who, between them, eat everything we leave lying around after hours, right? The script was eaten. Deal with it. Does Vaughn see Elibrius as a rival? None of his actions make sense. Nothing the Kori Sus do makes sense! Stop obsessing over Vaughn! Actually, it makes sense that he would try to feel out whether Elibrius really did love Akuma, if he, Vaughn, wanted Akuma as a mate for himself, whatever the reason. As for why he's concerned with loving and supporting her, that was probably just a show he was putting on to one-up Alibrius, like, Ha! I'm more attentive than you! Bloody blah Mahane wasn't mentioned before today. The scripts were eaten. Mahane's another demigod with whom Alibrius was in love. It's also all in the backstory, which will be airing the pre-pilot season. And who is Kei? Kei Lenore is the other Meliora who, along with Mahene, incarnated and was reborn on Earth. Why does Vaughn think Alibrius can't love Akuma as opposed to just not loving her? And why would anyone love Akuma? He's obviously trying to gaslight Alibrius. As I said, he's trying to show up Alibrius, speaking in meta terms. Corey was probably trying to use reverse psychology to manipulate Talibrius into falling in love with Akuma. If Caleb can just borrow Desmoda's frying pan and bean Vaughn upside the head, why is he so afraid of Vaughn? Also, since Caleb is so much taller and bulkier than Vaughn, how is Vaughn able to swing him around by the arm and break his bones? Do you understand how vampires work? I get the gaslighting thing, but how the hell does Vaughn know about Takuma's dead ex and what she did or did not tell him? I'm going to call him Dead Larry. Hey Akuma, do you want some soup? It's nice and warm! Warmer than your dead boyfriend! Today's soup. Cream of my first period. Mmm, mmm, tasty. I mean, what? 
Well, I guess that's better than the cake of the day is humble pie. I don't care if it's an anachronism. That was a stupid move on Gossip Girl's part. What would be Akuma's motivation for telling Alibri she loves him if she thinks he can't return her feelings? Also, why did Cory throw such a fit over Alibri's telling her about the spell if Akuma already thought Alibri's wouldn't be able to return her feelings? Manufactured angst, of course. Are you really in love with Epiphany? Did you not read the sarcasm tag? How did Akuma only have two chances to fall in love and confess her attraction in 5,000 years? I've got one. You think of Vaughn as an annoying guy in a tutu and recognize that he was gaslighting Libris, yes? I knew he was gaslighting, I didn't understand his motivation. And yeah, I think he's being an annoying prick in this episode. Um, right. There's a note and an attachment to your contract that says you find Vaughn a bit of alright. The note's referring to Vaughn Sr. Oh my god, there's two of them. Vaughn Jr. is still attractive, but infinitely more irritating. You'll find that a trend with fathers and sons on this show. The thing about the sons being irritating is too. Right. How come you can imitate Vaughn and Alibrius, but not Caleb? I thought my Caleb impression was the most accurate of the three. Had you ever heard Vaughn speak prior to this episode? Yeah, he doesn't actually usually sound like that, which is why it took me a few minutes to realize it was Vaughn. I don't know why he's doing an accent for the show. His voice actors thought it would be hilarious! Fair enough. Caleb explicitly said, Here, Vaughn will explain before Vaughn started talking. Look, when Caleb talks, half the time I just hear nails on a chalkboard, and his bad fashion sense hurts my eyes too much to look directly at the screen, so I couldn't see the subtitles, okay? Blah 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 blah